Even though Spotify is the most popular music streaming platform in the world, they aren't making any profit. Its business model sucks. The tech giant has tied itself in tight corners trying to get something good from their terrible business model. From a failed investment of $1 billion into podcasting to monthly subscription price increases, mass layoffs, and more. Let's delve into some of the reasons that has Spotify in big trouble. Before Spotify was launched, music piracy was the dominant force. An empire of illegal downloading and piracy was built thanks to the peer-to-peer -peer sound file sharing capability provided by LimeWire, Napster, and many similar platforms. The mainstream music industry was unable to keep it under control. Luckily, by 2006, Spotify was launched with the sole purpose of dealing with piracy. Spotify offered users a basic limited music catalog for free and made it as easy as pirating. The only difference this time is that the the artists would get revenue from each stream, but a freemium is only as good as the revenue model to back it up. For revenue, Spotify's free users can stream unlimited amounts of music on their desktop but need to listen to ads every once in a while. However, they can easily upgrade to a premium subscription to get the full Spotify experience. But since Spotify saw itself as the legal alternative to piracy, they needed to license the music from the big three labels in the industry, Sony, Universal, and Warner. Spotify agreed to pay $200 million, or 75% of their total revenue, whichever was greater, in exchange for access to the entire catalogs of the big three. This was great because users could access all music worldwide without paying per song, but terrible because Spotify had to pay for this access. This means that if Spotify earns $1 billion this year, for example, 750 million will go to the big three. Not only do they have to pay to access the catalog, but they also need to pay the rights holders for a fraction of each stream in perpetuity when streamers pay for it. And let me tell you, the cost structure is absolutely insane. As of 2023, Spotify pays artists between 0 .003 cents and 0 .005 cents per stream on average. This can vary depending on the streamer location in the world. That works out to an approximate revenue split of 70-30. So that's 70% 70 to the rights holders and 30% to Spotify, which in turn goes to operations, expenses, and salaries, practically leaving nothing for profit. These royalties go to the rights holders regardless of how many times you've streamed the song. In other words, the more songs you stream, the more Spotify has to pay. Some might argue that paying so little per stream to the artist doesn't seem like much, especially considering that Spotify is infamously known as the platform that pays artists the least. And considering that they boast over 551 million active users each month out of 220 million are premium, that's a lot of money flowing in, while only a small fraction is flowing out, right? Well, that's not entirely correct, no. Spotify has close to $10 billion in royalties since its launch in 2006 and has achieved its first ever profit in 2019. Let's compare this to Netflix, for example, which also relies on a pay-to-play business model. Netflix produces its own shows and movies, which, as you can imagine, costs a lot up front. They need to pay actors, directors, editors, everybody. However, once these shows and movies are out, they don't need to keep shelling out money. There are a few cases where they acquire content from others, but most of the money they make from their original stuff goes right back into their pockets, and it stays there. The more you watch their content, the happier they are, since you're more likely to promote their service, upgrade your subscription model, and endure the price changes. But this isn't the case with Spotify. For each stream, Spotify pays somebody. The more you stream, the more they're gonna have to pay. Not only that, but the music catalog you find in Spotify is to be identical to the one in other rival services like Apple Music. Unlike Netflix, they don't produce their own content. They do bring artists for exclusive sessions now and then, of course, but this isn't enough to make a huge spike in revenue. To achieve that, they need to make something original. You see, Apple has always been the company that mattered in the podcasting world. Spotify, on the other hand, didn't support podcasts until 2015. Initially, their foray into podcasting wasn't particularly earnest and remained so until 2019. Spotify soon recognized the booming growth in podcast popularity and pledged to invest about a billion dollars to build their empire. This decision was well justified as approximately 33% of Americans now tune in to podcasts at least once a week, which is an all-time high. 
Moreover, monthly podcast downloads worldwide increased from 111 million to 125 million. Furthermore, podcast listeners, when compared to the consumers of other media forms, tend to be younger and have higher incomes. The podcast industry is experiencing a boom in advertising revenue, fueled by the fact that 30% of listeners fall within the 12 to 24 age group, and nearly half of them earn more than $75,000 annually. It only makes sense for Spotify to capitalize on the growth opportunity here. They already have a large audience listening to podcasts, but they wanted to go further. To do so, Spotify has went on an acquisition spree with a budget of up to half a billion dollars set aside for podcast acquisitions in 2019. Spotify had decided to spend $400 million of that budget buying Parcast, Gimlet, and Anchor. They made deals with the Obamas, the Kardashians, Meghan Markle, Prince Harry, and the biggest podcaster in the world, Joe Rogan. It spent up to $250,000 every single episode to entice new listeners around the world and around $290 million on podcast studios. Simply put, Spotify wants to become the premier podcast platform. It's worth noting that no other company worldwide has made such a substantial bet on podcasting. However, the payoff hasn't materialized as expected just yet. Sure, they've gained a rise in subscribers and have had some successes, but nothing that's really a game changer for them. Spotify's enormous investment has left some questioning the rationality of its bet on the industry. You see, podcasting world still represents a small fraction of the digital advertising market as it's expected to hit $2.3 billion this year. Furthermore, the increasing number of podcast listeners is met with a tsunami of shows on various streaming platforms, making it challenging for new hits to emerge. And that is exactly what put Spotify in bad financial shape here. Since the acquisition spree, Meghan Markle's podcast was discontinued in less than a year, and the Obamas parted ways with their arrangement to join Amazon's Audible. To address this, Spotify let go of hundreds of employees at the podcasting studios they had acquired, gradually scaling back production and integrating them into the new Spotify studios. They had high hopes that this bet would yield returns, but then soon realized that their customers weren't as interested as they expected. By making podcasting more popular, Spotify had created an opportunity for other platforms to capitalize on. Looking back, Spotify might have spent too much on its exclusive content, but it did manage to become the popular platform for podcasts. This year, Spotify expects podcast ad revenue to grow by 30%, which is more than its overall revenue growth. As podcasts evolve, Spotify wants to be a bit like YouTube, selling ads along creator content and sharing revenue. They also want to capitalize on the huge database that they have to show their users ads that they might want. With the Spotify audience network, advertisers can reach certain groups of listeners, giving them more chances to advertise. However, this remains a long-term vision because as of right now, their bet is not paying off. If anything, it's made matters worse for them. Spotify was forced to lay off about 2% of its workforce and raise the price of its core subscriptions by a dollar to $10.99 per month. To sum it up, Spotify has had its financial challenges. They've tried different things like investing in podcasts, but it hasn't always paid off as expected. Yet, they're still working hard to find the right balance between making revenue and keeping their customers happy. The music and podcasting industry is a forever evolving business, and Spotify has to keep adapting in order to stay on top. If you've enjoyed the video, please make sure to leave us a like and hit the subscribe button. It'll definitely help me make more videos in the future. Also, be sure to check out some of these videos. I'd highly recommend watching the video about Disney's current collapse. This is Shortery, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.